lift your voice if you can speak in tongues. Let's begin to lift up our voices and speak in tongues. Le kapa yanda yaba, le kata yandi yandelebo, kapa yanda yaba. With the fruit of our lips, lift your voice. Le kata yandi yanda yaba. Bless the name of the Lord. Adore the name of the Lord. Give him all the praise. Give him the glory. Le kapa yanda yaba. Lift your voice. Le kata yandelebo. Le kapa yanda yaba. Le kata yandi yanda yaba. Le kaya yandelebo. Kapa yanda yaba. He's worthy. Of our praise, he's worthy of our worship. Lake Kabayan Dayaba, Lake Katayan Dian Delebo, Kabayan Dayaba. Father, we are grateful. Lake Kayan Dian Dayaba, Lake Katayan Dayaba. We give you all the praise, we give you all the glory. Lake Kabayan Dayaba, bless the name of the Lord, adore the name of the Lord, worship the name. Lake Kabayan Dayaba, Lake Kabayan Dayaba. From your home, we lift your voice. Le kata ya di anda ya ba, le kaba ya anda ya ba. Just speak in tongues. Le kata ya ba, le kaya anda ya ba. Father, we bless you. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify you. Le kaya derebo, le kaba ya anda ya ba, le kata ya anda ya ba, le kaba ya anda ya ba, le kata ya anda ya ba. If you will move, we leave. We have our being. It has been your grace and mercy. Father, we kabaya derebo, le kabaya dayaba. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Le kaya dayaba. Lift your voice, le kabaya dia derebo, le kabaya dayaba, le kataya dia dayaba, le kaya derebo, kabaya dayaba. We glorify your name. We honor your name, Le Kaya Dayaba. Lu Kataya Dia Delebo. Le Kabaya Dayaba. Le Kataya Dia Delebo. Kabaya Daba. Le Kidia Dayaba. Le Kataya Dayaba. Lift your voice, Le Kaya Dia Delebo. Lu Kataya Dia Dayaba. Le Kaya Delebo. Kabaya Dayaba. Le Kataya Daba. Father, we thank you for a bright morning day you've given unto us. Le Kabaya Dayaba. Le Kataya. Kaya di anda ya ba, luk kata ya derebo, kaba ya anda ya ba. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Le kaya di anda ya ba. We are grateful, Lord, to you, Jesus. We thank you. Maso washe na me use. So
We bless you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We magnify your name. We thank you, Jesus. Adonai, we worship you. Son of God, you are so good. Just worship him. Just glorify the name of the Lord. Something great is going to happen to you this morning. Praise God and give him all the glory.
For him alone is worthy. For him alone is worthy. Oh, for him. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you this morning. Give you all the glory for blessing us by your word. We love your word so much because a time of your word is a time of destiny. Thank you for transformations of testimony. Destiny. Thank you for translations, revolutions that we are going to have encounter with this morning. Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Now, let me start by, let me give you this scripture. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. I like the message version. Now, Zechariah chapter 4. Bible says that it's not by mind, nor by power, says the Lord. But by mind. When you read that, then the Lord, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by mind, nor by power, but by my story, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. I like the, the message version. So that means that no matter what you are in need of, in this life, put it in your mind that it's not by might, it's not by power. See us not any prophet, see us not any bishop, see us not any president, but see us the Lord. So that means whatever you are in need of, it will only come by God or by the help of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So I would like to program you for you to fix your eye on the word of God. Fix your eye on the things that can bring total transformations to your life. We were learning something about who you are in Christ. Part two, who you are in Christ. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in this life, what makes you different? It's not about where you were born or even the school you attended. It's all about who you are and what you know. So it's so important that you become aware of who you are in Christ. Who you are, one, and also what you know. So it's so important when you come into the house of God, you pay attention to the word of God. Amen. I told you last week that your, under, your level of understanding determines the quality of life you will live. Amen. Your level of understanding determines the quality of life you will live. It is Psalm 119, verse 144. The book of Psalm 119, verse 144. I read, The, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. This is my prayer request. Give me understanding and I shall live. Father, this is my prayer request. Give me understanding, then I shall live. Give me understanding, and then I shall. No, he did not mention of money. Give me pounds. No. Give me dollars. No. Give me security agents. No. Just give me understanding, 
And I know, as I gain understanding about the realities of the kingdom, then I shall live. Receive deep understanding today. Now, Psalm 32, verse 8. The book of Psalm 32, verse number 8. I read, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way where thou shalt go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that there are many devices in the heart of men. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. And the top you will nipa dream in the system. That's when you are dear and the general. In your life adventure, make sure you don't lean or tr- put your trust on your own understanding. Allow God to guide you and direct you. Otherwise, you flop. You drop down like a stone. So the psalmist says that I will instruct thee, I the Lord will instruct thee and teach you in the way. There is a way because there are so many ways. But I will teach you the way which thou shalt go. And I will guide thee with my eyes. Today, it is my prayer that God will guide us by his eyes. And I will say, I will guide you with my loving eyes. The eye of God is full of love. And when someone will gain understanding about the word of God, tension and pressure will be removed from you. Others think that when God look at you, the next thing he's going to strike you and kill you. But me, my, the gospel tells me that God has now loving eyes. When God look onto you, he doesn't see any bad thing like he should strike you or kill you or do something against you. When he sees you, he sees his nature in you. He sees his very life in you. He falls in love with you. And that is why I see God ministry to somebody here with his loving eyes today. Anything that the enemy had designed against you, I see them being terminated. Shout a big amen. Wow. Clap your hand for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Say, Holy Spirit, I love you so much. Can you do your hand like this? Say, Holy Spirit, I love you. Do you know that as you do that thing, you are connecting yourself. You are participating in the realm of the spirit, spiritual realities. Do it again. Say, Holy Spirit, I love you. Psalm 119, verse 130. Psalm 119, verse 130. Can we read together, church? He says that now, some, see, the unfolding of your words. And that's why a time with the word is a time with destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to somebody, somebody say, Pastor. Those who are not matured in the things of God, but those who have grown to the realm of maturity, look at their perception, their minds. Now, look at what God's word can do to you. The unfolding of your words gives light. Sir, it, it takes light to define your speed. Higher your light, Amen. more speed you gain. And Bible said that the unfolding of your word gives light. May you receive more light today. Today, may you receive more light. When you say light, may you receive more directions, more illumination, more grace. Shout a big amen. And that light gives understanding even to the very simple. Someone who has just been born again today. When he gained access into the word of God, he will get some kind of understanding that Satan can never take him or destroy his entire life. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Satan's major assignment is to blindfold your understanding from God's word. The major assignment of Satan is to blindfold you from what? The plans, the agenda, the activity, the plans of God in his word concern your life. That is Satan's one major assignment against your life. To frustrate you. To, if Satan wants to frustrate your life, he will, the first thing he will do is to blindfold you. To the blindfold you. Amen. But I'm here to let you know that you are not an ordinary. Say to yourself that I am not an ordinary person. Hallelujah. Now, John chapter 16. John chapter 14, verse 6. John 14, 6. 
who you are in Christ. When you come to know who you are in Christ, it will change the way you pray. Yeah, it will make your participations in prayer become effective. Your participation in worship, in everything in the kingdom become effective. We are all Christians, but what will make you, your participations in the kingdom, whether you are praying or working for the Lord, doing something in the kingdom of God, become effective based on your knowledge about who you are in Christ. Your depth about who you are in Christ. Jesus answered, listen, I am the way, not a way. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one come to the Father except through me. Hallelujah. So now let's take it one by one. Jesus came and said what? I am the way. I am the truth. I am, you, you can't talk like that. I am the life. When you check that word life there, it, it's called to Zoe. That means that the life of God. That means I am the life. So the moment you become born again, that life is imparted into your spirit. So you also can say, I, I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. And when that life is imparted into you, you cease to be an ordinary person. God expects to live super life. Live your life as a superhuman being. Because super life, which is superior to any other life, has been imparted to your life. The way you know or you see yourself is so important. And that is what I say, as man thinketh, so as he is. It's if you think you are a failure, nobody can lift you up. If you think you are broke and poor, nobody, even when we push you to white house, you turn into black house. All that you need to know is to have deep knowledge about who you are in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 3. I love what Apostle Paul said. From this time forth, see yourself as a great person, as a blessed person. Hallelujah. Look at what Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Can we read together one, two? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has done what? Ble- not curse us. Ghana, I curse that word from the root. They don't know the word of God. When I'm asking him, who told you? Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has not will, not shall, who has done what? Bless us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Say, I am blessed with all spiritual blessings. Longevity is part of the blessing. Say, I am blessed with all the spiritual blessings. Protection is part of that blessing. Do you know that God has chosen you? When when God came to that house, that big house, you were the one he chose. It's part of that blessing. I am a chosen one. I am not an ordinary. This is how you should be thinking. He chose me. And he blessed me. And he appointed me. And he justified me. So my case is different. What stop others can never stop me. Shout a better amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. I told you that when you now, when you become born again, you have a new status in Christ. Say, I have a new status in Christ. Say, I am not an ordinary person. Say, I have a new status in Christ. Say, what stop my father cannot stop me? What stop my uncles can never stop me? What stop my grandfathers can never stop me? Because I have a new status in Christ. Why? Colossians chapter 1 verse 30 says that God has translated you and I. He has translated you and I from darkness into his marvelous light. So as I'm standing here, 
Now, before I became born again, I was living in the realm and the region of darkness. And the day I became born again, God, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, God translated me from the realm of darkness into the realm of light. So as I'm standing here, God has already rescued me. He has already transported me. So right now, whatever is happening in America can never happen to me. Whatever is happening to America can never happen to me because I am not there. And whatever happened to you here can never happen to somebody who is in America because of the environment where you are living. I'm here to let you know you are not an ordinary. You won't die like an ordinary person. What affect others can never affect you. What stop others can never stop you. So many, many years ago, a, a woman did certain t- something that I will never forget. It. He had, she had two children. And she happened to be a witch. So, she sent her children to one of the fatty priests somewhere to protect her children for her. There were two children. And because he was killing many people. But God to put up time, she wanted to just go back and kill one of the child, one of her children. Meanwhile, whilst the children were living with the fatty priest, they were still going to school. I could see them every day going to school. It's a life is spiritual. As you are sitting down like this, life is spiritual. That's the one you are hearing the word of God be happy. To your amazement, whilst he was walking from behind the fatty priest to snatch one of the ch- one of her children and kill her, the fatty priest strike her. Now the woman was in the house and started shouting and screaming that somebody had struck in her. And to be careful if you call confront her, I patch her. And I go for catch the chrome for now. Well, then the money be jamming. But me name the entire all seven band over back to the baba. Oh, we are like I said, meant to buy one whole bank. Tina, my bonnet. My mother will fear the man with your muko school. Nels was say, in the realm of the spirit, they are living with the fatty priest. So before you can kill them in that kind of accident, unless you go to the fatty priest house and kill them, before you can kill them in that plane crash, unless you go to that fatty priest house and kill them, sir, I'm here to let you know, after the order of Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 6, God has raised us up together. Oh, one clap, clap your hand for Jesus. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 6, Bible says that God, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So right now, if somebody say he's angry at me, so he wants to come and strike me, he has to go to the place where I'm living. Go and meet my daddy God. Enter into Jesus before he can strike me. After this seven, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every town that rises against you in judgment, we will condemn them now. So if this woman was now only was able to now kill her one of her children by having access into the domain of that fetty priest, that means that for coronavirus to get access to you, unless it penetrate through our Lord God Jesus Christ before God, life is spiritual. Life is spiritual, your life is secured. Your destiny is secured and your family are secured. None of your relatives will die premature or dead. Anytime you wake up early in the morning, don't say, Pastor, I am one of them. Speak to yourself with the word of God that God raised us up together with Christ. That means whatever can never stop Christ can never stop you. Why? Because we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Far above. Clap your hand for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Question, can you fail? I love this. I see this quotation ringing in my ears. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that person ceases to be an ordinary person. Therefore, if any woman, any man is in Christ, he ceases to be an ordinary person. Hallelujah. All things are passed away. All things are passed away. They are gone. The new has come. So that means as I'm standing here, I am a new creature. Can you say I am a new creature? Say I am a new creation. 
Why? Because the life of God is imparted into your life. The life of God is imparted into your human story. That makes you a new creation. So one stop others can never stop you. When you meditate upon these things, it will help you to live a strange and a wonderful life. Shout a big amen. Praise. Why why have they closed these doors? The place is too hot. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Say, I am blessed. Say, I'm a new creation. Say, all things have passed away. Say, behold, everything has become new. Oh, say, I'm a new creation. Say, I'm a new creation. Begin to talk to God in prayer. Speak in tongues and honor the Lord. Say, I'm a new creation. Say, I'm a new creation. All things have passed away. And everything has become new. Oh, speak. Say, I'm a new creation. Hallelujah. Can you fail? Can you go down? Amen. Amen. Now, now first John chapter one verse two. First John chapter one verse number two. Bible says that for the life was manifested and we have seen it. Hallelujah. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. For the life was manifested. And we have seen it. For the life was manifested. And we have seen That means that the life that he was talking about was Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ came, I believe in him. I receive him. And I accepted him as my Lord and personal Savior. And that life now has been imparted into me. So that means that as I'm standing here, the same life that is, that is inside of God or Jesus Christ is the same life that is inside of you. And that's why today, as we lift our hand like this and pray, the same way that God answered the prayers of Jesus, our prayers must also be answered. The same way Jesus spoke and the tree died on the spot, today, anything you curse will die on the spot. The same way Jesus called for that, 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 that body, because of the kind of life that was working in him, then he also, as you call things, it will come back to life. He said, very, very, I say unto you, he that believed in me, John chapter 14, verse 12, he that believed in me, don't you believe in Jesus? He that believed in me, don't you believe in Jesus? He that believed in me, the works that I do, you also shall do also. Greater works than this shall you do, because I go to be with my Father. So that means today, as we stand to pray, we do the same thing. Very, very, I say unto me, because I believe in Jesus Christ, the works that Jesus did, I am going to do the same thing. Because the life that was working in Jesus is the same life that is working inside of me. St- clap your hand for Jesus Christ. Amen. A change took place when you gave your life to Jesus. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 1. A change took place when you gave your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Second Peter, last quotation that we pray. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse number 1 through. Grace and peace. Anything I say, if you like it, you can say amen to it. Grace and peace be multiplied upon your life. May you enjoy grace in the name of Jesus. Through the knowledge of God. For, now, Peter Pesot says, Who person, when you are not here, you are not here. When you are not here, you are not here. And here, I will say, when you are not here, you are not here. 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 For instance, I taught one of my members, say, there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. On say, yet me can you say, no, when you preach, you know, he does not know what that, and I know where people from. But when the word gain access into you, there will be a revolution in your system. When you saw some day, and I, he saw a beast chasing after her. And what Kai said, my Kenya man said, there is power in the name of Jesus. He just turned, she turned, said, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. The thing just burst out. Why? That means that now she has gained knowledge about the name of Jesus. Today, that name will work for you. As you mention the name of Jesus, something great will happen to you. Pray. According to 
Or say, according as his divine power, hello, according as his divine power has given unto us all things. How many things? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. For, let's read together for, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature. So when somebody asks you, who are you in Christ? Say, I have divine nature in Christ. Who are you? I have divine nature in Christ. That means that what makes God God is inside of me. Can God be lacking? Then you also will never lack. Who are you in Christ? I have divine nature in Christ. It means I have the nature of God in Christ. So when I find myself in Christ, I receive the very nature of God. Some to Peter, let's pray. Say, I have the nature of God in Christ. Say, in Christ, I have the very nature of God. Say, in Christ, I have the very nature of God. Can I prophesy to somebody here? Do your hand like this. Say, Holy Spirit, I love you so much. Can you wave your hands and say thank you to God for giving you his very nature? For imparting upon you his very nature. Say, Father, thank you for giving us your very nature. Say, Father, thank you for giving us your very nature. Your very nature. Can you magnify the name of the Lord? For giving us your very nature. Praise the name of the Lord. Worship the name of the Lord. Adore the name of the Lord. For giving us your very nature. We are participators of divine nature. We are participators of divine nature. We have the life of God in us. We have the spirit of God working in us. Can you praise the God? Can you praise the Lord and give more the glory? Then I'm asking you have to say, I thank you, Father, for giving me your very nature. For giving me your very nature. Mark chapter 5, verse number 4. Say, a big thank you to God. Something is happening here this morning. Just glorify the name of the Lord. Jesus. Can I show you something? When you become aware that you have the life of God in you, this is how you should live your life. Look at Jesus Christ. He is our example. Because, because of time, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in the pieces, neither could any man tame him. Nobody could tame this man. Church, let's push it forward. Nobody could tame this man. Five. Bible says that, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tomb, crying and cutting himself with stones. Let's push it forward. But listen, I want to show you who you are. But when he saw Jesus Apollo, when Jesus Christ came, ladies and gentlemen, do you know that he was sleeping? One day the disciples said, hey, sir, you are sleeping. And she woke up, he woke up. Can God sleep? He came to live a kind of the kind of lifestyle to give us to show us example to become an example for us. He was eating. Sometimes he become hungry. Then he go and buy food. He said, "Go and go and buy food in Adabraka for me." Go. That is sound. Let me paraphrase it. He was living life as a normal human being. Yet his mindset was different. What makes you different is your mindset. Even right now you can be standing and be sleeping. It's your mindset, not about aging. It's your mindset. You can be standing and still be sleeping. And you can also, now, so the way you think is so important. But when he saw Jesus Apollo, he ran and did what? And worshiped him. Today, every demon will bow before you. Why? Because the, the kind of life Jesus had at that time was different than any other person on this earth. Because nobody was able, nobody was born again. It was only Jesus who had the life of God on himself. And today, that same life has been imparted to you. And then, I will feel ever be Another version will say it in different altogether. Do your hand like this. Say, Father, 
in the name of Jesus, I thank you for giving me dominion over viruses, infections. Can you say a big thank you to God? Then you have to say, one more to be a tear to be dear, Yaria and Brasia, or Hania Mania, then you have to say, one more to be a tear to be dear in Pedimia, Yaria or Hania Mania, then you have to say, in the name of Jesus, let Katara Ramayando say thank you to God for giving you power and authority over sicknesses, over diseases, over infirmities. Say, Father, thank you for giving me dominion, power over demons, over sicknesses, over diseases. In the name of Jesus, talk to God the prayer. Magnify the name of the Lord. Worship the name of the Lord. Jesus. Now, let me talk. After this service, any demon that will meet you will be shouting. Oh, do you believe it? They will be screaming. How many believe it? It will work for you like that. Why? Christ in you. Christ in you. See what happened to your daddy. When that demonic person saw him, he did what? He shouted at the top of his voice. What do you want with me? Jesus, son of the most high God. Swear to God that, <laughs> swear to God that you won't torture me. Sir, no demon is permitted to torture you. Has the right to torture you. Say, Father, as I speak in tongues, I stay up the anointed to be a demon torture. We get to stay up the anointed. Can you stay up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Just stay up the power, sister. Stay, say, Lord, I stay up the anointing. I stay up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. John chapter 5, verse 1. Say, Lord, I stay up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I stay up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I stare up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I stare out my God. In the name of Jesus, Le Katama, Ramayadorobo, say, Father, I stare up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I stare up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I stare up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I stare up the power and the oh, stare up the anointing. Ladies and gentlemen, Le Katarabayadorobo, in the name of Jesus. Every blessed day, the way I'm leading in prayer, do it the same thing in your house. It will help you. Let me give you a graphical picture about what I'm doing with you right now. Let's read it. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Let's push it forward. Amen. Two. Now, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethsaida. What is that? Having five porches. In this lay, let's read together, lay a great multitude of what? Impotent folk. One, blind. Two, hot. And the Bible said, with them, waiting for the moving of the waters. Hallelujah. Waiting for what? Bible said, anytime the angel comes down and stir up the waters, will be an Ephraim, will come and what on Say what for the bar? No, but who knows so now? Will be and cast a cancer. I want the breast man. None of what on What's the meaning of that? Jesus said, "Those who receive me out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water." And then you have to stir up the waters. You are ready to enter the pedium. You are ready to walk. See, you are ready to walk. Because of the stirring of the waters, that sickness will disappear. We get to stir up the waters. Stir up the anointing. For stir up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, can you stir up the waters? Can you stir up the waters? In the name of Jesus, an angel of the Lord at a certain season into the pool and trouble the water. Sister, can you stir up the water? Brother, stir up the water. Stir up the water. Stir up the waters in the name of Jesus. Stir up the waters. Stir up the waters. Ramayandorobo. Li kataraba. Li andorobo kataba. Li andorobo shatarabayaba. In the name of Jesus. Yandorobo 
Oshata. In the name of Jesus, can you stir up the waters? Can you stir up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Can you stir up the water and the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Can you stir up the waters? In the name of Jesus, Lekataroba, Rabayadorobo. Can you stir up the waters? Can, can you stir up the anointing? In the name of Jesus, can you stir up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Can you stir up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Can you stir up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Can you stir up the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Can you stir up the power? Lekataroba, Rabba Yadorobo, Lekataroba, Rabba Sadaroba, Yadoroba Kaba, Yadorobo, Yadoroba Sadaroba, Lekataroba. Rabba Yadorobo, Lekataroba, Rabba Yadorobo, Lekataroba, Rabba Yadorobo, Yadorobo Sadaroba. Can you speak it out? Stay up the waters. Stay up the waters. Rama Yadorobo. Yadorobo Sata. Yadorobo Katara. Yadorobo Kaba. Yadorobo. Yadorobo. Rama Yadorobo. Stay up the power. Stay up the mountain. Stay up the mountain. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Can you imagine? For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Listen. Hello. Are you here with me? Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole. Today you'll be made whole as you live here. For whosoever disease he had, leave your hand like this. Say, Father, any hidden disease, infection, hiding somewhere by the stirring of the waters, may that disease, may that infection be disappeared from my entire system. Can you stir up the anointing within your liver, your kidneys, your heart, your soul, your brain? Uh, cancer, cancer can never visit you. You will never have cancer. You will never have cancer. You will never have diabetes. Stir up the anointing. Sister, stir up the anointing. You will never have diabetes. You will never have cancer. You will never have liver problem. You will never have glaucoma. You will never have arthritis. You will never have mass stroke. Prophesy. 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 First Thessalonians chapter two verse eighteen. First Thessalonians chapter two verse eighteen. Yandorobo, 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 Shandaraba, Yandorobo, Katama, Rama Yandorobo, Shanda. Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Are we still there? I want us to pray. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered me. I want us to pray. Say, Lord God, Father, Lord God, Father any satanic and demonic manipulation, any satanic and demonic manipulation to, hinder good things, to hinder good things, good things to come into my life, I overcome those hindrances, those hindrances, those obstacles. We get to pray obstacles, satanic hindrances, satanic hindrances, demonic hindrances. Use the name of Jesus. Use the name of Jesus to bind and cast out satanic and demonic hindrances. We cast satanic and demonic hindrances in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Osiapai, 